Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very pleased to have a chance to talk with you about popular stories from the internet. Today we'll try to see from the stories, dreams, and visualization we Chinese often talk about. Here is a brief outline of the lecture. The lecture will be in five parts. Part one, listen to the desires of your heart. Part two, don't be overtaken by failure. Part three, be equipped with science and knowledge. Part four, be sure the view is brilliant. And part five, take action right away. As we know, today is China under the leadership of CPC Central Committee with Comrade Xi Jinping as the General Secretary has made strategic arrangements for its future development. One of them is to realize the Chinese dream of the great renewal of the Chinese nation. Here, I talk about the two key words of the topic. First, what are dreams? According to dictionaries, dreams are involuntary activities that come to us when we sleep. Now, another key word. What is visualization? A dictionary tells us that Visualization means seeing a clear picture in your mind's eye. According to the explanation of the two keywords, the Chinese dream, in my estimation, is a clear picture we Chinese can see in our mind's eye and the dream we have to be able to visualize real if we hope it will really happen. Dreams may be images, sounds, ideas, or more. Sometimes we remember them, and sometimes not. The Chinese dream is a visualized dream, which is an intentional mental activity while we focus on the desires we want when we are awake. Many times, we may dream about our ideal job, the love of our life, wealth, health, or what we would like to do in retirement. Then how do we turn those dreams into reality? Maybe the first thing we should do is to listen to the desires of our heart and be sure what we really want. Glenner's Grow Book, a very popular story from the internet. Have you ever heard it? Glenner was a single mother with three young daughters, a house payment, a car payment, and a need to rekindle some dreams. One evening, she attended a seminar and heard a man speak on the I times V is equal to R principle. I, V, R are the initials of the three words. Imagination, vividness, and reality. That means imagination mixed with vividness can become reality. This concept struck a chord of creativity in her heart. She was determined to take her written dreams list and turn it into pictures. She began cutting up old magazines and gathering pictures that depicted the desires of her heart. She arranged them 
in an expensive photo album. Her pictures included a good-looking man, a woman in a wedding gown, and a man in tuxedo, bouquets of flowers, beautiful diamond jewelry, an island in the blue Caribbean, a lovely home, New furniture, a woman who had recently become vice president of a large corporation. She was working for a company that had no female officers. She wanted to be the first woman vice president in that company. About eight weeks later, she was driving down a California freeway, minding her own business. Suddenly, a gorgeous red and white Cadillac passed her. She looked at the car because it was a beautiful car. And the driver looked at her and smiled. And she smiled back because she always smiled. Then she was in deep trouble. The driver followed her for the next 15 miles, scared her to death. She drove a few miles, he drove a few miles. She parked, he parked, and eventually, do you know what happened? She married him. On the first day after the first date, Jim the driver sent her a dozen roses. Then she found out he had a hobby. His hobby was collecting diamonds, big ones. And he was looking for somebody to decorate. Of course, Glenna volunteered. They dated for about two years. And every Monday morning, she received a long stem red rose and a love note from him. Before they were getting married, Jim said to her, I have found the perfect place to go on our honeymoon. We will go to St. John's Island in the Caribbean. Glenna did not confess the truth about her picture book until she and Jim had been married for almost a year. It was then they were moving into their gorgeous new home and furnishing it with the elegant furniture that she had pictured. Jim turned out to be the West Coast wholesale distributor for one of the finest Eastern furniture manufacturers. By the way, the wedding was in Lagula Beach, California, and included the gown and tuxedo as realities. Eight months after she created her dream book, she became the vice president of human resources in the company where she worked. In some sense, this sounds like a fairy tale, but it is Absolutely true. So, learn from Galena. Decide what it is that you want in your area of your life. Imagine it vividly, then act on your desires by actually constructing your personal rule book. There are no impossible dreams. So ask yourself, does this feel right to me? Is this really what I wanted? If it is, write down your plan and strategy and visualize the actions you are taking to get the outcome you want. Not all people having dreams are as lucky as Galena. 
On the journey to realize our dream, we might pass through a storm of disappointment and failure. Failures of Abraham Lincoln is a very popular online story. I'd like to tell it to you. Although Abraham Lincoln is rated as one of the best American presidents, it is often pointed out that he had numerous failures in his career until he was elected as president in 1860. His story shows that even a failure can become president if he doesn't give up. I show you a list of the failures of Abraham Lincoln along with only a few successes. 1831, lost his job. 1832, defeated in wrongful Illinois state legislature. 1833, failed in business. 1834, elected to Illinois state legislature. Success this time. 1835, sweetheart died. 1836, had nervous breakdown. He had been on bed for six months. 1838, defeated in round for Illinois High Speaker. 1843, defeated in round for nomination for U.S. Congress. Eighteen forty six elected to Congress success this time. Eighteen forty eight lost renomination. Eighteen forty nine rejected for land officer position. Eighteen fifty four defeated in run for US Senate. Eighteen fifty six defeated in run for nomination for vice president. 1858, again defeated in round for U.S. Senate. 1860, elected president, success this time. Abraham Lincoln was a great president. His setbacks and defeats inspire people to overcome life's difficulties. We learn from his stories, if we stay true to our vision, we emerge firmer in our convictions, believing in our ability to accomplish something meaningful. Once we have our dream, don't be overtaken by failure. Go full steam ahead, just like Lincoln. Our civilization has collected an incredible amount of knowledge, and we are better for our understanding of these contributions, be they scientific or artistic. It is equally true that in studying the wisdom of knowledge, we learn how to think. More importantly, perhaps, knowledge teaches us to see the connections between dreams and reality, as well as to see beyond our immediate needs. I'll give you two online stories to illustrate it. Knowing where to hit it is one of them. Many years ago, a company developed the largest and greatest ship. But one day, the ship's boiler shut down. No amount of fiddling by the operators could get the boiler repaired. A boiler engineer was asked to repair the boiler. 
The engineer looked over the boiler, taking special note of several areas on the boiler. He then took a hammer out of his bag and hit one of the spots with a mighty whack. The boiler immediately sprang alive, and the ship could again brave the surging waves and move ahead. The engineer put the hammer back in his bag, walked up to the president of the company and said, that will be $10,000. The president looked at him and screamed, $10,000? You spent only two minutes just to hit with a hammer. The engineer pulled out an invoice sheet and wrote a few things down. Hitting the boiner with a hammer, one dollar. Knowing where to hit the boiner, nine thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine dollars. This story tells us everyone can hit the boiner with a hammer, but only those who have knowledge of the boiler know where to hit it. So knowledge can surely help us make our dream come into a reality. Another story from the internet also emphasizes the importance of knowledge for our dream to come true. The story is Magic Pebbles. As a teacher, I often meet with complaints from my students. So did the teacher in the story. Of all the complaints and questions the teacher had heard from his students during his years in the classroom, the question, why do we have to learn all of this dumb stuff, was the one most frequently uttered. The teacher would answer it by recounting the following legend. One night, a group of beggars were preparing to retire for the evening, when suddenly they were surrounded by a great light. They knew they were in the presence of a celestial being. With great anticipation, they awaited a heavenly message of great importance that they knew must be special for them. Finally, the voice spoke. Gather as many pebbles as you can. Put them in your saddlebags. Travel a day's journey and tomorrow night we'll find you glad or sad. After having Departed, the beggars shared their disappointment and anger with each other. They had expected the revelation of a great universal truth that would enable them to create wealth, health, purpose for the world. But instead, they were given a menial task that made no sense to them at all. However, the memory of the brilliance of their visitor caused each one to pick up a few pebbles and deposit them in their saddlebags while voicing their display. They travel a day's journey, and that night, when making camp, they reached into their saddlebags and discovered every pebble they had gathered had become a diamond. They were glad and sad. They were glad they had diamonds. They were sad they had not gathered more pebbles. In the story, 
Tables mean knowledge. We learn in school. After graduation, when we need guidance in a moment of crisis, a table will become a diamond. And so it is to you, I say, gather all the tables you can in school, and you will have a future filled with diamonds. From the two stories, we see one: knowledge is no. In time of need, two, there is no royal road to learning. Three, knowledge can help our dreams come true. As we know, it is difficult for a dream to become reality, especially at the beginning of our effort. Sometimes, when nothing seems to support. Our dreams stand by us in the darkness of the night, in our mind, innermost, speaking within us, urging us to strive for the unachievable. And soon, we are out to get it, successful at last. Now, a story from the internet is coming to my mind. That is, success takes off like a rocket. A man once witnessed a space shuttle launch. He gave us the following description: the shuttle weighed two thousand tons, the weight equivalent of fifteen-story building. As start commands are issued. The space shuttle began to inch off the path, and the shuttle inches and inches and closed its way upward so slowly at first that you swear a full ascent would never be possible. Barely moving, burning up massive amount of fuel. It is said that. 85% of the shuttle's fuel is expanded within the first two minutes, but with increasing ease, the shuttle picked up and rolled into the sky, headed into space. It's said that the fuel left would keep it working for more than two weeks. And that's exactly how success takes off. The first steps we take towards our dream are the hardest, and will require an enormous expenditure of energy for a great big push. However, if we persist through the launch phase, everything gets easier and easier. And your results get bigger and bigger with relatively small amount of fuel. So don't give up your dream when you meet with difficulties. Keep on. The view is brilliant. A dream is a dream. To realize a dream, we should take action right away. Dreaming about being sharp will not get you sharp. Dreaming about being rich will not get you rich. Dreaming about being famous will not get you famous. Dreaming about the end result will not make it happen. If you want to get in shape, you have to work out. If you want to make money, you have to be in action to earn money. If you want to be famous, you have to put yourself in a position to become famous. If you want to the end results, you have to do the actions required to get there. I will tell you a story online, written by Bob Richards. 
Bob Richards was a famous athlete who competed in Summer Olympics three times at the pool water and as a champion in 1956. Bob Richards says, there are many people who could be Olympic champions, but they have never tried. He estimates that five million people could have beaten him in the poor world. The years he won it, at least five million. Men who were stronger, bigger, and faster than he was could have done it. But they never picked up a pool, never made the feeble effort to pick their legs off the ground to get over the bar. He was trying to break Sergei Bubaka's record. Sergei Bubaka was a Ukrainian former pool voter. He broke the world record for men's pool voting 35 times, 17 outdoor and 18 indoor records, and won six consecutive IAAF World Championships. Bob Richards was about a foot below Sergei Bubaka's record. Bob Richards wanted to learn some skills of poor voting from Sergei Bubaka. But Sergei Bubaka would agree. Bob Richards decided to take actions. He called Sergei Bubaka on the phone. He said, can you help me? I seem to have leveled off. I cannot get any higher. Sergei Bubaka said, come on up to visit me, and I'll give you all I got. Bob Richards spent three days with the master, the greatest poor voter in the world. For the three days, Bob Richards learned a lot. To make a long story short, he went up eight inches. So everything is possible if you take action. Another story is more interesting. The story is the farmer's beautiful daughter. A young man wished to marry the farmer's beautiful daughter. He went to the farmer to ask for his permission. The farmer looked at him and said, Go stand out in that field. I'm going to release three balls, one at a time. If you can catch the tail of any one of the three balls, you can marry my daughter. The young man stood in the field awaiting the first bull. The barn door opened, and out came the biggest and the strongest bull he had ever seen. He decided one of the next bulls had to be a better choice than this one. So he ran over to the side and let the bull pass through. The bundle opened again. Unbelievable. He had never seen anything so big and fierce in his life. The bull stood, pawing the ground, and eyed him. Whatever the next bull was like, it had to be a better choice than this one, he thought. Again, he ran over to the side and let the bull pass through. The door opened a third time. A smile came across his face. This was the weakest bull he had ever seen. This one was my bull, he said to himself. As the bull came running by, he positioned himself 
and jump at the exact moment. He threw his hands to grab, but, but the bull had no tail. The story tells us life is full of opportunities. Some will be easy to grab, some will be difficult. But once we let them pass, those opportunities may never again be available. People with a dream to realize will not wait for the next better opportunity. They should grab what comes along and make the best out of the available opportunity at hand. Do not wait for the perfect opportunity. Take action right away and always grab the first one. Finally, I'd like to say some more words before I finish the lecture. The Chinese dream belongs to every Chinese. So let's try our best to build the future of the Chinese dream. In a good society, with a strong economy, a cleaner environment, and a freer, safer, more prosperous world. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. That's the end of my talk.